Hello and welcome to my presentation entitled Berthog de Bay Syndrome, a rare genetic disorder involving spontaneous pneumothoraces and fibrofolliculomas. My name is Dr. Joshua Ronan. I'm a third year internal medicine resident at Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center at the Permian Basin in Odessa, Texas. I'd like to thank my attending physicians listed for their support of this project. The case describes a 54-year-old Caucasian female with the past medical history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and diabetes mellitus type 2 who presented to the ER from her PCP's office complaining of chest heaviness, shortness of breath, wheezing, and cough that were worsening over the last two days. Her PCP ordered a chest x-ray which showed a large left-sided pneumothorax with minimal rightward midline shift and subcutaneous emphysema. She was sent to the ER for further evaluation. A chest tube was placed and exudative bloody fluid drainage was noted. Pulmonology and cardiothoracic surgery consultations were sought by the emergency department and the patient was admitted to the hospital for further evaluation. She denied any history of chest trauma or smoking. She offered additional notes that her 57-year-old brother was recently treated for a pneumothorax, as were her mother and nephew. On admission, her vital signs were stable and she was afebrile. Laboratory studies did not show any abnormalities. Fungal and alpha-1 antitrypsin serologies were negative. Her hospital course was significant for video-assisted thoracoscopic surgery for bullet and bleb resection, as well as mechanical pleurodesis. A real-time image from the VATS procedure is shown in Figure 1. She was transferred to the ICU for post-op monitoring until she was stable enough to be transferred to the medical floor. With an underlying suspicion of Bert hogg dubay syndrome, Additional biopsies of papular lesions of the neck and cheek that were suggestive of fibrofolliculoma ensued. The bi biopsy slides that were sent to the pathology department for further evaluation are shown in Figure 2. The biopsy results and presence of pneumothorax confirmed the diagnosis of Bert hogg dubay syndrome. Pneumothorax resolution was achieved with routine management and the patient was discharged home with close follow-up. The Bird Hog Dubay syndrome genotype is characterized by more than 100 unique germline mutations. The one we are most concerned about is the loss of function germline mutation in the folliculin gene on chromosome 17p11.2. There isn't a clear correlation between the type of mutation and the extent of the kidney, lung, or skin involvement. The phenotype, however, is highly heterogeneous. It's characterized by fibrofolliculomas and trichodiscomas, lung cysts, and renal masses. The fibrofolliculomas and trichodiscomas are skin hamartomas of the midface and cheeks. The renal masses can be benign and also malignant. The benign variants are hybrid oncocytic chromophobic tumors, termed HOCTs. One of the malignant variants includes clear cell renal carcinoma. 8 out of 10 affected patients will, affect, will develop lung cysts in the bilateral thorax. 30% of this group consequently develops spontaneous pneumothoraces as a result of these cysts, especially at ages less than 40 years. Of note, patients requiring invasive or non-invasive positive pressure ventilation should be managed carefully as increased positive and expiratory pressures can precipitate spontaneous pneumothoraces, especially in those with known lung cysts. The prognosis of Bert hogg dubay syndrome largely depends on the penetrance of the renal cancer and its histologic type. While patients with clear cell carcinoma and Bert hogg dubay syndrome have passed away, there aren't many cases reported of death in such patients. Active surveillance is recommended for dominant lesions less than 3 centimeters. Nephron sparing surgery is recommended for dominant lesions greater than or equal to 3 centimeters. All in all, renal preservation is the ultimate goal. Patients with Berthog Dubay syndrome will still require lifelong surveillance for renal cancer beginning at every three years. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation.